I was born in the local hospital and grew up here in Southwick, very close to the port, just on the other side of the railway tracks. The old coal power station really dominated the landscape in those days. Pretty much everywhere in the town, you could see the two chimneys pumping out smoke. And at night time, you could hear the big blasts of steam as they cleaned out the machinery. The quayside had all the cranes which were unloading the coal. And of course, there was the big coal pile next to the power station. A lot of people in the town, parents of my school friends, worked in the power station or in the port or in the fishing boats. There wasn't much to do around here for us kids, so this was our playground a lot of the time. The power station provided most of the electricity for the local area. People weren't really too conscious back then of the environmental effects of the power station. The fact that it was putting out poisonous chemicals into the atmosphere. And most people were even less aware about climate change and the carbon dioxide that the plant was producing. That was 35 years ago. When I was old enough, I left to go to university and ended up traveling all over the world for my work. When I eventually came back here again, I was working in the renewable energy industry, working with governments and companies to help switch from fossil fuels to wind power. The world had really changed and I could see this area was changing too. And we ended up establishing a GWEC office right here in the port, about 500 meters from where I'd grown up. The coal power station was demolished in the late 1980s, replaced with a smaller gas plant, and the fishing fleet had mainly disappeared. The people turned out to see the demolition of a 350-foot chimney at Shoreham Power Station. For more than 30 years, but in this ever-changing world, nothing is forever. It's always windy here, so it made sense when five years ago they built the big offshore wind farm, which now supplies about half the power to the whole county of Sussex. The port has really changed how it operates. It's more open to the local community. They put in a marina and more leisure facilities. They also installed onshore wind and solar. And the next thing in the pipeline is a green hydrogen plant to supply local goods vehicles and buses. It will help clean up the air more for local people. And out there in the sea, there's plans for a big expansion of the wind farm, which once it's built, will be more than enough to supply the whole county and beyond. I work to promote wind energy all around the world, but I still feel a really special connection here. And I feel really good about being able to tell people how things are changing in my own area where I grew up. Humanity is going into a really crucial phase now. We don't have much time anymore to turn things around and stop really dangerous global heating from happening in a way that really threatens our ability to live and thrive on this planet at all. Switching away from coal to renewable energy sources like wind power is one of the really important solutions that we need. So I'm really proud of the work we're doing to help them make the change. I often get people around the world who are worried about the future, who ask me about jobs and how their economies are going to be affected by the energy transition. I often tell them about this place and the change for the better I can see in terms of people's lives and their opportunities and the environment they live in. I really want to tell this story because I want people to see the climate crisis not just as a challenge but as an opportunity to create growth and do things in a better way. I'm going up to the COP26 climate talks to talk to policymakers and representatives of civil society about what we need to do to scale up wind energy all around the world. But this isn't just about a technology revolution and change into cleaner, more efficient sources of energy. It's about a just transition. It's about creating better jobs and opportunities for people who live in areas like this but also better and healthier conditions for people to live and bring their kids up in. There's still a lot to be done to completely fix things here, just like in the world as a whole. 
But when I look around and see what people are capable of doing, I feel a real sense of hope that we can get to where we need to go. Not just here, but everywhere.